this video, we are going to cover two main entities. Those are the United States Corporation Company and the CT Corporation System. So let's get started. With the first one, we will look at a business filing from Ohio. Now notice the registered agent is the Corporation Service Company listed at that address. And this is a bulk agent change in which we will find which entities are controlled or which like businesses or corporations are controlled by this corporation company. The first name to notice is the Prentice Hall Corporation System Incorporated, which through many of my videos and much of my research, I've found them to be the registry agents for a revolving door of corporations that work for and own other corporations who in turn own the original one. So it's a sort of a circular system set up for business filings. Among the other interesting corporations on this list, I'm sure many will notice the name Rothschild or Rothschild and Co. Asset Management U.S. Incorporated, as well as the Rothschild and Co. U.S. Incorporated, and there will be another one mentioned. Next, we find the Corporation Service Company which if you remember at the beginning of this paper was listed as the registered agent for this company. So that's very interesting. And while all of the other names here are interested as well, let's continue on to the other odd entities that are controlled by this one. We have the Iroquois Services Corporation, which considering the context of this video would be very telling to find exactly what that company is engaged in. Next, we have the Evergreen Distributor Incorporated, which of course is a very uh, infamous name or famous, depending on which perspective you would like from many recent events in the last decade. Then we have the RT Vanderbilt Company Incorporated, which of course is very well known among many of the other names on this list. Then we have the National Corporation for Housing Partnerships. And of course, as you notice, the Barnum and Bailey name up there on the top of this. Very interesting. And this all comes from the same document. Then we have the Dale Carnegie and Associates Incorporated, which looks like Vanderbilt is a very famous and well-known name. Next, we have the American International Underwriters Agency of Ohio Incorporated. So that is a mouthful and a very, very interesting name. One must wonder what exactly a international American underwriter agency is required for. Or for which that may be required. Now we have equally interesting the Scholastic Book Fairs Incorporated and another NM Rothschild or Rothschild and Sons Denver Incorporated. And remember this document is from Ohio. Interestingly, we also have the Traffic Control Corporation. And of course, just like Carnegie and Vanderbilt, JP Morgan Fund Distributors Incorporated would be an equally company to control. Now we have the North Coast Communications LLC, the Acorn Service Corporation, and the Farmland Atwood Company. All three of those have very interesting implications for being contained within the same entity. Now out of all of the other names on this list, two names that really stick out is the Broad Street Securities Incorporated, and we'll find out later why that one specifically, and the Next Wave Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. After seeing that document, it is very important to know more about this company, considering they control nearly everything, but they also control all the names 
that are known for monopolies in the past. So it would be very pertinent to look at the old business filings and get somewhat of this corporation's history. And we'll start that with the Articles of Incorporation, which were filed in Florida in this document, the 15th of July, 1925. Now this is a certificate of incorporation of the United States Corporation Company. Itself very interesting name for company. See, it is the company that runs the United States Corporation. Take of that what you will. Now, Certificate of Incorporation of United States Corporation Company. The name of the corporation is United States Corporation Company. The nature of the business and the objects and purposes proposed to be transacted, promoted, or carried on by the corporation are as follows. To prepare or cause to be prepared and procure to be filed, recorded, registered, published, issued, or granted in accordance with law articles or certificates of incorporation, applications for letters, patent, charters, and other instruments relating to the incorporation and organization of our corporations and joint stock companies. And of course, reading that list, we find they control pretty much everything in the United States. To prepare or cause to be prepared, procured, to be filed, recorded, registered, published, issued, or granted certifications, reports, or certificates, reports, statements, applications for licenses, and to do business or other instruments in relation to domestic and foreign corporations, companies, or associations. To provide and maintain, maintain domiciliary and other offices and facilities for corporations, companies, and associations, and to act as agent in charge thereof and upon whom process against or any official notice to any such corporation, company, or association may be served or given, and for any other lawful purpose. To act as the fiscal or transfer agent of or registrar of the or yeah, registrar of the stock or securities issued by any public or private corporation. Notice that wording by any public or private corporation. And in such capacity to receive and Disperse money to transfer, register, countersign issue, and deliver certificates of stock, bonds, or other evidences of indebtedness, and to act as agent of any corporation, foreign or domestic, for any lawful purpose. Now, notice that wording. Or other evidence of indebtedness. That means a certificate of stock or bonds is evidence of indebtedness. To carry on the business of an appraisal and audit company and in connection therewith to make examinations and appraisals of the business and property of corporations and individuals to examine and audit their books and accounts and to make reports and cer certificates in respect thereof. To publish and deal in books, periodicals, pamphlet, legal forms, and blanks of all kinds. To acquire by purchase or otherwise and to hold for investment or otherwise to use, sell, lease, or dispose of real estate and real property and any interest, estate, or rights therein. Notice any interest, estate, or rights therein. To acquire by purchase, subscription, or otherwise, and to hold for investment or otherwise, and to use, sell, or dispose of shares of stock, bonds, or any other obligations or securities of any corporation, domestic or foreign, to aid in any manner any corporation whose shares of stock, bonds, or other obligations are held, or in any manner guaranteed by the company, or in which the company is in any way interested, and to do any other acts or things for the preservation, protection, improvement, or enhancement of the value of any such shares of stock, bonds, or other obligations, or to do any acts or things designed for any such purposes, and while owner of any such share of stock, bonds, or other obligations, to exercise all the rights, powers, and privileges of ownership thereof, and to exercise any and all voting powers thereon. To acquire by purchase or otherwise, and to hold, own, use, grant, license, in respect to or otherwise turn to account or dispose of any copyrights, trademarks, inventions, patent rights, and letters patent of the United States or of any other country. So let's look at that again. States to account or dispose of any copyrights, trademarks, inventions, patent rights, and letters patent of the United States or of any other country. So, according to this document, it is not actually the patent office. Either that or the patent office 
an allegedly government institution, is underneath this company. Because in this document, it is stating that it is responsible for the functions of that entity. So that's interesting. That's almost a direct declaration that this company is the government. That's that, uh, How else could you construe that, really? The business of the corporation is from time to time to do any one or more of the acts and things herein set forth, and it may conduct business in the state of Florida, other states, the District of Columbia, the territories and colonies of the United States, and in foreign countries. Now notice that wording, the territories and colonies. I thought we weren't colonies anymore. Have one or more offices out of the state of Florida and hold purchase mortgage and convey real and personal property within or without the state of Florida. Maximum number of shares, which is corporation is authorized to have outstanding at any time is 100. Each which shares shall have a par value of $100. Now remember, oh, the corporation is to have perpetual existence. The principal office of the corporation shall be located in the Centennial Building, Tallahassee. The number of directors shall be three. So you have three people running the U.S. government corporation. Isn't that interesting? And remember, this document is from 1925. From this document, those three people are Harry O. Kowloon, Kulan Ulan. It's uh, hard to read what that's saying. Uh, of course, all three have the same address at 150 Broadway, New York. Samuel B. Howard, Arthur W. Breton. The names and post office addresses of the subscribers of this certificate, the number of shares or stock which each agreed to take are as follows. Lewis H. Gunther, also with that New York address. Samuel B. Howard, same address, Arthur W. Britton. So, that's interesting. Lewis H. Gunther is listed under the shareholder and the director is changed with Harry O, uh, that weird last name, and the other two remain the same. Samuel and Arthur are both equal on shares and controlling company. Directors and stockholders shall have power to hold their meetings and to have one or more offices and to keep the books of the corporation except the original or duplicate stock ledger. Outside the state of Florida, at such place or places as from time to time may be designated and by the bylaws or by resolution of the board. Directors shall also have power without the assent or vote of the stockholders to make and alter by laws of the corporation to fix the times for the declaration and payment of dividends and to fix and vary the amount to be reserved as working capital. To determine the use and disposition of any surplus or net profits over and above the capital book paid in, and in their discretion, the directors may use and apply any such surplus or accumulated profits, purchasing or acquiring the bonds or other obligations or shares of the capital stock of the corporation to such extent and in such manner and upon such terms as the directors shall deem expedient, but shares of such capital stock so purchased or acquired may be resold unless such shares shall have been retired for the purpose of decreasing the corporation's capital stock as provided by law. I wonder whose law that is. We, the undersigned, being each of the original subscribers to capital stock hereunto named, and do hereby associate for the purpose of, for establishing a corporation pursuant to the Corporation Law State of Florida 1925, witness our hands and seals this 7th day of July in presence of signatures. State of New York, County of New York, July 7th, AD 1925, personally appeared before me a notary public in and for New York County, duly authorized to take acknowledgments, Lewis H. Gunther, Samuel B. Howard, and Arthur W. Breton, to me known and known to me to be the persons described in and who executed the foregoing instrument. Yeah, that's all just regular general stuff, but the interesting thing is that the signature is dated 1927. Now we come to the next document in our chain, and this is from Ohio again, and this is the formation document from 1935. Now remember in the Florida document, there were New York addresses listed. Keep that in mind. Starting out, application for license under Ohio Foreign Corporation Act to the Secretary of State, Columbus, Ohio. United States Corporation Company, a foreign corporation desiring the quality to qualify as a foreign corporation in Ohio pursuant to the provisions of the sections 
8685-1, I think. Uh, hard to read there. That's sec. General Code of Ohio does hereby certify as follows. First, its corporate name is United States Corporation Company. It is a corporation organized under laws of New York. Notice that. Organized under laws of New York. Just wait until we look at the next document. The corporate or complete, it is corporate, say the complete or corporate, address of its principal office outside the state of Ohio is 150 Broadway, New York City. That's the same address as on the previous document. Name of the county and city, village, or township in which it is principal, its principal office within this state is to be located is Columbus, Franklin County. It hereby constitutes and appoints Morris Loper. So there's a new name. A resident of the county wherein such principal Ohio office is to be located as its agent upon whom services of process may be had in the state of Ohio. The complete residence address of such person is that one right there. It hereby consents irrevocably to the service of process of such person and his successors as long as the authority of such agents shall continue as provided by the Ohio Foreign Corporation Act and to service of process on the Secretary of State of Ohio in the event such person or persons cannot be found or in any of other events, thereby such service is authorized by the Ohio Foreign Corporation Act. Now notice that states that services of process on such person and his successor. The purpose of the corporation is assisting attorneys in the organization cert quali uh, qualification and maintenance of corporation. Now there you go. There is your government, your real, tangible, operational government. This corporation organizes, qualifies, and maintains all other corporations. And it's called the United States Corporation Company. And it has three directors. This application is not made to enable the corporation to prosecute or defend action or suit the cause of which arose prior to this application. So after this application, then yes, they can. Oh. Well, I, I suppose it, it's three members in Florida, even though one of those names is different. And uh, here it's only specified one up to this point. So we've got four people in total running the entire U.S. government, essentially. The approximate date upon which the corporation began transacting business in Ohio, in our, first, in our opinion, the United States Corporation Company has not prior to this date of this application engaged in business in Ohio. We do not intend to engage in business in Ohio, and this application is made solely because the Secretary of State of Ohio has requested such qualification and that the Secretary of the State of Ohio has raised a question or doubt as to whether we are or not engaged in business in Ohio. Well, that's a little confusing. They're not, they're a business, but their business is businesses, right? It's, it's the government. Their business is government, essentially. This application is to secure permanent license. Then we have 11th. There is herewith submitted a copy of the applicant's article of incorporation, including all amendments thereto certified by the proper official state under the laws of which the applicant is authorized. Or is it organized? Yeah, that's organized. Uh, and witness thereof, all that stuff. 1935. Now we come to the next document as it relates to this particular entry, entity, another certificate of incorporation of United States Corporation Company. Now this one is uh, dated a little bit past, but it does have this stamp of Office of Secretary of State, October 2nd, 1902 for the state of New York. Now this is a little bit hard to read, but it's another certificate of incorporation of the United States Corporation Company. The undersigned persons, all of whom are citizens of the United States, 
and one of whom is res resident of the state of New York. Now notice that. Only one in this document is listed as resident of the state of New York. Yet in all the other documents, a New York-based address was given. To hereby form a stock corporation under the business corporations law of the state of New York to be known as United States Corporation Company for the following purposes. To furnish facilities to and aid persons in the organization, reorganization, and consolidation of corporations pursuant to the laws of the state of New York or uh, elsewhere. To make examinations and investigations concerning the uh, I'm not sure what that word is. It's something in physical condition of manufacturing and something plants and business undertakings and enterprises of all kinds. Now, they list that all kinds, so they don't really need the extra explanation there. That's just filler wording, basically. To aid, to aid, right? <laughs> yeah, aid. Corporations in the making of certificates, reports, and statements required by law to be made and in filing the same in the preparation and publication of prospects. I believe that prospects. It might be something else, though. And in keeping their accounts and records. To set as a transfer agent or registrar or both of the certificates of stock, bonds, other securities of corporations, domestic and foreign. To be appointed and to act as the agent of domestic and foreign corporations other than money corporations and to provide and maintain offices, books, and other contrivances and facilities for such corporations in lawfully carrying on their business in the state of New York. Next, general nature in connecting with the foregoing and to have and to exercise all the powers conferred by the laws of New York upon corporations formed under the act here and above referred to. The amount of the capital stock is $50,000 divided into 500 shares of the par value of $100 each. The amount of capital with which the corporation will begin business is $1,000. Not exceeding 200 shares of said capital stock may be preferred stock entitling the holders therewith to receive cumulative dividends at the rate of but never exceeding 6 per centum per annum, and also entitling the holders thereof to that looks like it's pricity, but it's sort of underlined there, in the payment of the par value of their preferred shares and dividends accumulated and unpaid thereon in case of dissolution or distribution of the entire assets of the company among the stockholders. It is at the time of issuing and preferred shares, the directors may provide that the same may be exchanged for or converted into common stock of the same par value within a specified time, and any preferred shares may be issued subject to the right of redemption by the company at a specified time. In furtherance and not in limitation of the powers conferred by statute, the board directors are expressly authorized hold their meetings to have one or more offices and to keep the books of the company within and without the state of New York at such places as may be from time to time designated by them to determine from time to time whether and if allowed under what conditions or regulations the accounts and books of the company or either of them shall be open to to carry on a general something and commission business. I, I believe that's what it says. To carry on the business of publishers of books, pamphlets, and periodicals of all kinds, to purchase or otherwise acquire and use or sell, issue or lease or otherwise dispose of real and personal property of all kinds of set bills of exchange, gold and silver, bullion, and in particular lands, buildings, businesses, concerns, and undertakings, mortgages, shares, stocks. Looks like it says debauchers, but it's probably something else. You can't really read there. Securities, options, concessions, book debts, and claims, and any interest in real or personal property. To enter into, make, perform, and carry out 
contracts of every kind with a corporation organized under business corporation law may enter into. And for any lawful purpose with any person, firm, association, or corporation, to issue bonds, debentures, oh, okay, so it did say that, or obligations of the company from time to time for any of the objects or purposes of the company and to secure the same by mortgage, pledge, deed of trust, or otherwise. To acquire, hold, use, sell, assign, lease, grant, licenses in respect of mortgages or otherwise dispose of letters patent of the United States or any foreign country. Now, there's the repeating of that particular line right there that we found in the Florida copy, but not in the Ohio one, where it states that they can do all of these things for the United States or any foreign country, as in they are the United States. They're the government. Uh, patent rights, licenses, and privileges, inventions, improvements, and processes, trademarks, and trade names, and copyrights relating to or useful in connection with the business of the corporation. To conduct business in any of the states, territories, colonies, or dependencies of the United States, in the District of Columbia, and in any of foreign countries, as to have one or more offices there when and there, therein, and there, therein to, well, that's repeated twice. To purchase, hold, mortgage, and convey real and personal property in general to carry on in any, any other business of the inspection of the stockholders and the stockholders' rights in this respect and shall be restricted or limited accordingly. To make, alter, amend, rescind the bylaws of the company to fix the amount to be reserved as working capital or as reserve fund and to fix the times for the declaration and payment of dividends and subject to the provisions of the statutes to authorize and cause to be executed mortgages and liens upon the real and personal property of the company to net designate two or more of their number to some time uh, substitute constitute an executive committee which committee shall, for the time being, as provided in the bylaws, have an exercise any or all the powers of the board of directors in the control of the ordinary business of the company? Now notice, who else loves committees? Well, our alleged Congress, right? They love to do committees. And we have executive branch committees of the alleged U.S. government. In fact, everywhere, just about, we have executive committees that just seem to keep creating more executive committees, kind of like a a really difficult to remove infestation. Except where otherwise provided by statute, a resolution in writing signed by all the members of the board, look at this resolution, of directors or executive committee shall be deemed to be the legal act of the company with the name, force, and effect, as if the same had been duly passed by the same at a duly convened meeting. The company may use and apply its surplus earnings or accumulated profits to the purchase or acquisition of property and to purchase or acquisition of its own shares of stock from time to time to such extent and in such manner and upon such terms as its board of directors shall determine and neither property nor the capital stock so purchased and acquired shall be regarded as profits for the purpose of declaration of payment or dividends unless otherwise determined by a majority of the board of directors. Now, this document and the other two documents are hard evidence that our alleged government country of the United States is actually run by a board of directors and its corporation. It is declared as much in these documents, and these documents are taken from official sources. This is evidence that a board of directors runs our country. They are the ones that choose the president. The president is an executive officer of this company. It is chosen by the board of directors, just like the executive committee is chosen by the board of directors subject to the foregoing provisions and the bylaws may prescribe the number of directors to constitute a quorum at their meetings and such number may be less than a majority of the whole number the company reserves the right to amend alter change or repeal any provisions contained in this certificate certificate in the manner now or hereafter prescribed by statute for the amount amendment of the Certificate of Incorporation. The principal business office of this company is to be located in the City of New York, County of New York, and State of New York. The duration of the company is to be perpetual. The number of its directors is to be three. The directors for the first year are as follows. Dan Fellows Platt of 44 Broadway, New York City. John B. Parker, uh, 
looks like 32 Liberty Street, maybe, New York City, and Andrew W. Marshall, 44 Broadway, New York City. Notice those addresses are not 150 Broadway. And witness, we have hereunto subscribed our names and post office addresses, and we respectively agreed to take the number of shares of stock said corporation set uh, opposite to our signature. So this is kind of like the signers of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. That's probably what these people see themselves as anyway. And this is dated September 29, 1902. Very long time ago. And here, here we have the first signature, State of New York, County of New York. And then uh, just a general uh, thing. This personally, Dan Fellow Platt and John something Parker. Here we get the Certificate of Incorporation from the State of New York. And most of this is difficult to read. It, it looks like it was done on like a, a charcoal sort of deal or the old photo capture method. Next we have the certificate of designation and there you have that address 150 Broadway, New York City, New York and there's that other name that pops up H O Ulan or Kulan. I'm not really sure what that name is. It, it looks like it might might be Kulan. Here we have the same name under President Certificate of Designation. So this is basically just the same document repeated, but in the same document. So it, it, these are different pages, of the same document. I did just take the same picture and repeat it twice. <laughs> now we have this section, which is we, the undersigned, being of all stockholders in the United States Corporation Company, stock corporation organized under laws of the state of New York, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here we have laws of 1904 and signature dated 1905. So that's kind of interesting that we have different dates popping up in this single document that allegedly was signed into 1947. So that's kind of interesting. Here again, we get the signature under 1905 and it states Franklin Wagner being duly sworn deposes and says that he is the secretary of the United States Corporation Company. So there's that position that we see popping up all over alleged US government, all of these secretaries. Just like a corporation's secretary. Now, as all roads seem to lead to Delaware instead of Rome, we get this document. Certificate of increase of something that's probably something to do with shares. United States Corporation Company, pursuant to the section 35 of the Stock Corporation Law, the undersigned United States Corporation Company, Delaware Corporation, being the holder of record of all the outstanding shares entitled to vote upon, so something, Certificate of Incorporation of United States Corporation Company, hereby certifies as follows. First, that the name of the corporation is United States Corporation Company, that the Certificate of Corporation of the corporation was filed in the office of the Secretary of State on the 2nd day of October 1902. Third, that the number of directors of said corporation previously authorized is six, and the number is increased to eight. Witness whereof we have signed the certificate this 12th day of August 1947. There you go. People that run this country in total are eight. Not whatever the population of the United States is, there are your board of directors of the United States of America. Here also we get with New York on the 12th day of August 1947. For me personally came Arthur W. Breton to be known, then being by and duly sworn, did depose and say that he resi resides in West Orange, New Jersey, that he is the vice president of the United States Corporation Company. So there's definitely something very suspicious going on with these names, the locations, the business filings, the positions, and of course, what is in fact being controlled and done by these corporations and the board of directors of these corporations and all other entities that are spin-offs spin of them and 
have very suspicious ties, shall we say. And declaration. Next, we get this name, first stated, R.J. Gorman, and qualified and acting secretary of the United States Corporation Company, and as such is the custodian of the stock book of said corporation. So that's a possible route that you could look into for where such a type of book might be located now. But considering in all their documents, they talk about constantly moving these things around. That's sort of the, the idea is that they funnel things and make it very difficult for them to be tracked down and probably lie. You know, a lot of these names could be completely fake as well as the addresses. I mean, who's going to enforce it, right? They are the enforcers. Well, they're not the practical enforcers they're the controllers anyway but they delegate to enforcers here we get the first of these really old uh carbon or photocopy documents or whatever they are i'm not really familiar with the medium this one is dated 1947 13th day of august city of albany now is this a new york state company is this a delaware company ohio florida what what company is this is where is it originating from so far we've got delaware and new york dated 1902. So that's interesting. Now, how does this all come about? What is the practical mechanism that recognizes the legitimacy of the United States Corporation Company government? Practically speaking, they might not put that in their company title, you know, the United States Corporation government. Instead, they say United States Corporation Company, but it is the government. But how do they get put practically speaking, into power. Who recognizes their legitimacy? And for that, we need to look at a different entity, the second one for this video. This document is an application for license under Foreign Corporation Act of Ohio. We'll come back to Ohio. And it's called the CT Corporation. Now, CT could be an abbreviation for Connecticut, but it doesn't really stipulate what CT actually stands for. It just says it's the CT Corporation. But it also states the CT Corporation's system. That's interesting. And this, of course, is dated September 1936, which is one year after the filing for the United States Corporation Company in Ohio. State of Ohio, application for license under Ohio Foreign Corporation Act. To the Secretary of State, Columbus, Ohio, CT Corporation system. A foreign corporation desiring to transact business in Ohio pursuant to the provisions of the section blah, 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 General Code of Ohio does hereby certify as follows. Its corporation name or corporate name is CT Corporation System. It is a corporation organized under laws of Delaware, as always, with a similar address as nearly all of these companies. The complete address of the principal office outside the state of Ohio is 100 West 10th Street, Wilmington, Delaware. Name of the county and city, village, or township in which its principal office within the state is to be located is Cuyahoga, Cleveland. Now, of course, naturally... The other one was Columbus, because they can't actually have these two entities in the exact same city. Because I suppose this stuff isn't damning and obvious enough. It hereby constitute and appoints David M. Donnelly, I believe, resident of the county, where in such principal office, Ohio office, is to be located as its agent upon whom service of process may be had in the state of Ohio. The complete residence address of such person is 1790, uh, all that right there. And, of course, that all that thing about uh, successors and stuff. And then the purpose of the corporation is short summary, see writer, just not registering. There's herewith submitted a copy of the applicant's articles of incorporation, including all amendments. There to certified by the proper official the state under the laws of which the applicant is organized, CT Corporation System, August 1936. Now notice below that it states the state of New Jersey, County of Hudson, Norman J. Like Fog Goffin, however you say that. Now, here is the most important part of all. To serve members of the bar of this state or any other state and foreign country in any lawful manner, 
in the organization, registration, and qualification of corporations, domestic and foreign. So that is how you have the establishment of a U.S. corporation as government, is that all of these courts that establish and recognize the sovereign jurisdiction of juridic entities over human beings comes from this corporation right here. They run our so-called legal system that we have, the, the court banks that we're all forced to adhere to under the threat of force through their UN blue uniformed gun-toting Gestapo that they have running around and robbing people. Of course, nowadays they have a bunch of different uh, uniform colors and they do all these other things, but all of those people, they all work together. They're all corporate. They are the enforcement mechanism of this corporation right here. And these are behind them the enforcers of the United States Corporation Company. In continuation, to represent corporations, domestic and foreign, in a statutory capacity, right? Statutory capacity. What does that mean? To establish and maintain for corporations, domestic and foreign, principal and registered offices, to act as or furnish the agent for corporations, domestic and foreign, upon whom processes may be served, and to carry on a general service agency business. To secure, publish, and distribute in letter, bulletin, journal, digest, or other form, information with respect to court decisions, statutory requirements and provisions, official and departmental rulings, regulations, and requirements, and legislative proceedings of the government of the United States. Now, of course, that would be the United States Corporation or any or all of the states, district, territories, or colonies of the United States of America and of the Dominion and Provinces of Canada and other foreign countries with respect to the organization, incorporation, maintenance, corporations, domestic, and foreign. So these, this is not just the United States. These two entities are involved globally. So their names might be a little bit misleading. While they do dominate and control the United States, you have... A handful of people, practically speaking, running the country from their board of director positions on these two particular entities. Certificate of Incorporation of CT Corporation System. First, the name of the corporation is CT Corporation System. Its principal office in the state of Delaware is located at number 100 West 10th Street in the city of Wilmington County of Newcastle. The name and address of its resident agent is Corporation Trust Company. Again, more revolving doors of different juridic entities owning each other. Number 100 West 10th Street, Wilmington, Delaware. Same address. Coincidence? Well, yeah, it does coincide. Third, the nature of the business or objects or purposes to be transacted, promoted, or carried on are to serve members of the bar of this state or any other state in any foreign country in any lawful matter in the organization, registration, and qualification of corporations, domestic, and foreign. To represent corporations, domestic and foreign, in a statutory capacity to set... I already read all this stuff anyway. So this is just basically copy and paste, uh, declaring that they're going to do exactly what no, they, we know they do. We see it. We just don't know it's them doing it. Or this particular entity with all of these... Their board of directors and, and all their high-up mandates that they like to disperse throughout the uh, fake government that we're all subjected to. And next, in, in this article, we get pretty much all of the same stuff that we already read in the other ones. You have the total number of shares and what those are worth here. And for the purposes of those video, the, that information isn't really important. Now, with this document, we get some different names here. We've got L.H. Uh, Hernan, or Hornan. I think it's probably Hernan, uh, B.R. Jones, and W.T. Robson, Robson, Hobson, something like that, uh, Wilmington, Delaware, Perpetual Existence, and the private property of the stockholders shall not be subject to the payment of corporate debts to any extent whatsoever. And in further ints and not in limitation of the powers conferred by statute, the Board of Directors is expressly authorized to make, alter, or repeal the bylaws of the corporation to set apart out of any funds of the corporation available. 
or dividends, a reserve of reserves for any proper purpose or to abolish any such reserves in the manner to which it was created. So on and so forth. And then we get more of the same general declarations that we find copy and pasted to everything. And here we get the same names, L.H. Hernan, B.R. Jones, J.T. Hobson, and of course we also got another name, Herbert E. Ladder, L-A-T-T-E-R, and of course this is signed 8th day of August, 1936, and naturally coming out of Delaware. Oh, and of course here in this document we get that Herbert E. Ladder was the notary public, and he was appointed February 23rd, 1935, the year before signing this document, and also the year that that other corporation was incorporated into Ohio. And here we get that document, the State of Delaware Office of Secretary of State seal, and the date, August 36, well, 1936, 14th of August. Now, we get this interesting piece of the puzzle, the Union Commerce Building. Now, for the purposes of other videos, that's an interesting name, but for the purposes of this one, I won't really mention the other videos that I've done on the subject, specifically the Union. Owned and operated by the Union Linux Company, Cleveland, Ohio, MS Halliday President Room something. Certified copy of Re resolution of the board of directors of the Union Lennox Company. The undersigned P.W. Jewell, Secretary of the Union Lennox Company, does hereby certify that a meeting of the board of directors of said company held at the office of the company at 740 Union Trust Building. Remember, one of the registered agents was a trust company, right? This is the Union Trust Building. So there might be a correlation. On the ninth day of May 1938, at 11 o'clock a.m., at which all of the directors were present, the following resolution was adopted, resolved that the name of the Union Trust Building is to be changed to the Union Commerce Building as of May 16, 1938. And then this is signed 1939. Now, in this document, uh, also dated May 9th, uh, 1935, 38, it's hard to read that one. To the tenants of the Union Trust Building, oh, here we go. On May 16th, 1938, the name of the Union Trust Building will be changed to the Union Commerce Building. Appropriate action to this effect has been taken by the directors of Union Properties Incorporated. That would be an interesting company to look into, as along with these two. The Note Holders Committee under the plan for reorganizing the affairs of the Union Trust Company and the directors of the Union Lennox Company. The new name was selected as one which does not break too sharply from the old one, and the word commerce accurately describes the business of a majority of the tenants, and is also especially suitable as the building now houses both the Cleveland Chamber of Commerce and the Union Bank of Commerce Company. Now those names, of course, would all reside in the same building as with this one because they are all executive committees and parts or subsidiaries of that United States Corporation Company the true government. As many requests from tenants for a change of name have been received in the past few years, we are particularly pleased to meet these requests with a name which is most suitable and to make the change at the logical time provided by the opening of the new Union Bank of Commerce Company. As the address Union Trust Building will hold good for a year or more as far as post office requirements are concerned, all tenants can wear out their present supplies of stationery, etc. without confusion or loss of prestige. Thank you, and if you have enjoyed this video, please check out my other content, such as my other published works in different formats. There are free books available at the link, and if you so desire, you may support my work at PayPal or Cash App.